Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Excited because we get a second scoop on the weekend edition of the John and Heidi Show. So we get a lot of fun stuff. I've been saving up all week long, so I got some good stuff to share. Oh, That's yeah. awesome. Hey, an Australian man who was on a trial on trial rather on suspicion of bank robbery has been given a retrial because of his name. Guess what his name is? What? Again, he's on trial for right. suspicion of bank robbery. His name is Rob Banks. <laughs> oh, wow. The judge made the decision to try the man under an alias because he thought the jury might have been swayed I'd by be his swayed. name. Yeah. Rob Banks. And you robbed banks. <laughs> fathers that spend more time with their children, uh, they say that fathers spend more time with children that resemble them. That was, was blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that was the result of a brand new study. A uh, Singale study suggests that fathers invest more time and energy in children who look and smell like they do. Look and smell Primal like they do? Primal indicators that they are biologically connected. So. That would explain why you're much closer to Taylor than <laughs> you are to Troy. Like <laughs> and she looks like you. I'm sorry, Taylor. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? Well, I'll tell you what. We'll just do the whole darn weekend. Saturday, July 16th is Celebration of the Horse Day, Hot Dog Night, National Hot Dog Day, Strawberry Rhubarb Wine Day, Toss Away the Could Haves and Should Haves Day, Woody Wagon Day, and World Snake Day. That's all Saturday. Then Sunday, Disneyland Day, National Ice Cream Day, Lake Superior Day, Wrong Way Corrigan Day, and Yellow Pig Day. It's a busy weekend. Of all those things, which one should we celebrate? I'm thinking ice cream day. I'm thinking the strawberry wine. And hot dog day. Not hot dogs. Good Lord. (laughs) How could you possibly? We've had so many many hot dogs lately. (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) I'm kind of getting sick of them now, too. All right. Thanks for joining us this weekend. Get out there and celebrate however you would like to celebrate. But thank you for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Whether you're an experienced shooter or someone new to self-defense, Front Sight Firearms Training Institute has a course for you. You may recognize Front Sight from their reality TV show filmed at this private range 45 minutes west of Las Vegas. A Diamond Lifetime membership is $15,000, but we have a special price of just $3,000 available now only at radiosavings.com. This lifetime membership allows you to take over 50 courses as often as you'd like at Front Sight Firearms Training Institute. Get this deal right now at radiosavings.com. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. In Amarillo, Texas, police say Joshua Glenn Smith stole the pickup from an alley and then collided with a car while he was driving away. Then he had a blowout on a tire and a near crash, and then the truck smashed into a light pole, and then he crashed into a bridge (laughs) pillar. That's a bad thing. The truck collided with a vehicle on a frontage road. Smith tried to keep bo- keep going, but somehow, sounds like he had it all together, somehow he lost control of the <laughs> truck, and then he veered into a parking lot oh of a Wendy's my. restaurant and smashed into another vehicle. At this point, a crowd of about 20 people chased <laughs> Smith around the restaurant. When they finally caught him, they tied his feet together with a garden hose. Holy cow. And the police came and finally handcuffed him. <laughs> So this sounds like the Three Stooges <laughs> trying to get away. It was just one guy. But that was that would be an awesome thing to watch on video. That would have been fun to catch on video, yeah. This guy, Joshua Glenn Smith, smashed into a lot of stuff. It's a lot of damage. So really, we shouldn't laugh about this. Think about all Nobody the property damage. Nobody was hurt, damage. though. Well, thank goodness. But he let's, let's count them up. He stole a pickup, so damage to somebody's truck. Collided with a car, so we got two things there. Uh, a blowout, that didn't cause any damage. But then a, a near crash, so that didn't really cause anything. Then he hit a light pole, so there's three things. Then a bridge pillar, so there's four things. And then another vehicle on a frontage road, which is five things. And then the, veered into the parking lot and hit a Wendy's restaurant. Oh, he, he hit the, a vehicle there, so there's six things. This dude, think of the thousands of dollars of damage. I wonder if cost. he's not a driver, if he had, he had stolen know. a car with no experience I in driving No, it doesn't say that. And it doesn't even say he was under the influence of anything. Or maybe he was only like 10 or it something. It doesn't say that <laughs> All I know is it sounds like one heck of a night there in Amarillo, Texas. That may be the most exciting thing that's happened there <laughs> for years. And you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. John and Heidi. 
The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain, and this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. When somebody robs you, it's probably best to call the police, unless, of course, you were robbed while making an illegal drug transaction. We hear these all the time. Because people are idiots, Heidi. This happened in East Hartford, Connecticut. A man called the police to report that he'd been robbed while trying to buy some crack cocaine. If you can't trust your crack cocaine dealer, who can you trust, right? Right. You just can't trust anyone these days. Max Minefield called police to tell them that he paid a man and a woman $8 for drugs. $8? Yeah, then he never got the drugs that he paid for. Police charged him with criminal attempt to commit possession of narcotics. During his arraignment, Judge Bradford Ward asked Minefield, quote, did you really think the police were going to go after the people? End quote. He added that uh, was a rhetorical question. You don't need to answer that. But they should have gone Well, they should that. have if they're drug dealers. Yeah, they should have worked together and said, you know what, let's let's crack yeah. down on these people and let's get your eight bucks back. Right. Because you're going to need it for attorney fees. <laughs> That's what happens when your brain is on drugs. John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. Even criminals sometimes get their day in court, and sometimes they win. Carl Truman, age 19, of Los Angeles, California, won $74,000 plus medical expenses when his neighbor ran over his hand with a Honda Accord. So if your neighbor ran over your hand, you should get paid, right? Okay. Depends on what you were doing. Listen to why he got his hand run over. Truman, again, 19 years young, didn't notice there was somebody at the wheel of the car when he was trying to steal the neighbor's hubcaps. And he still won $74,000. That is insane. Yeah. To me, I would say that is you get what you deserve. But apparently, that's not how the jury saw it. Oh, my god! And they thought he deserved $74,000. This is insane. It is insane. And it's true because you heard it. Oh, wait, no, that was a different one. But it certainly could have fit there. And that's what happens when your brain is on drugs. Oh, no, that's a different one. The jury's brain was on drugs. I don't understand how that could happen. This is just your moment of duh, and it's for the jury. This is ridiculous. That happened in Los Angeles, Each California. Each one of those jury members need to be slapped upside <laughs> well, the could, head. No, not that, but they could divvy up the seventy-four grand, and they could be the ones to pay it, rather than the guy that was getting his hubcap stolen and Good ran over someone's Lord. hand. Lord. All right. Moving on. We have your scoop of the day. It's on the way. The Scoop of the Day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Now, your Scoop of the Day. A panel of experts have concluded that California is definitely not ready for the inevitable big earthquake. Because they keep saying, you know, there's a huge fault line. You know, I remember back when uh, yeah. Superman came out in the 80s. Yeah. They were talking about the San Andreas Fault and, you know, he right. was, Lex Luthor was going to try to make, was it Lutherville or some stupid thing? I don't know. Lutherania, whatever. Yeah, anyway. Uh, there's some Superman geek shouting at the radio right now. So <laughs> thank you. I can't hear you though. Uh, but anyway, uh, this has been something they've been predicting for a long time and they're saying they are nowhere near ready. So when it happens... You don't want to be in California. And for me personally, especially with the story we just read recently about the jury finding, you know, seventy four thousand. Yeah, I have no interest in the being guy in that California. Got his hand run over stealing a hubcap. You don't want to be anywhere near California. <laughs> just <saying>. no. <laughs> uh, Macs are the most reliable computers in their biennial computer repair report. The computer repair company RescueCom says the difficulty with Windows has not eased as much as expected. As for Macs, the report says they are, quote, extremely reliable, end quote, and make up just 7% of the repair calls to these guys. Uh, I've never had a Mac. Remember those commercials? You I'm you a had, a, an oh, I had an iPad, iPad for a yeah. while. I just didn't, and nothing and against them. And you didn't them. like it. You I, didn't it, like the technology. It, it was really hard for me to get used to. Because remember those commercials? They had the really suave uh, yeah. guy. Hi, I'm a Mac. And then the nerd. Hi, hey, I'm a PC. Hi, I'm a PC. <laughs> and that's me. <laughs> I'm the nerd. <laughs> uh, fisherman caught a lost Gorpo camera. I'm um, the GoPro. That's what that would be probably spelling there. GoPro. Probably. Yeah, that makes more sense. 
After what was probably a year at the bottom of a UK lake, a GoPro camera has surfaced to tell its story. YouTuber Daniel Rose posted the video, the highlights of which is a crab hanging out and apparently taking selfies for the for the camera. Uh-huh. So if you want to see this, I do have a link on our Facebook page because, you know, if you're really, really bored to watch footage from the bottom of the ocean, there you go. <laughs> And a guy picks on the wrong car, a guy picks rather the wrong car to break into in Florida. Guy spotted what he thought was a nice car to break into as he was working on getting in. A man with a dog walked up, not just any man, but a police officer Mm. and the owner of the car. And not just any dog, but a canine Mm -hmm. police officer dog. So he really picked the wrong car to break into. He wouldn't notice that was a police car it wasn't it was his personal car oh yeah so it wasn't like it was a you know marked police car the guy was an idiot but he wasn't, wasn't that much of an that idiot. big of an idiot. <laughs> you know i want to make sure we we are fair there the u.s fish and wildlife service says they'll attempt to save an endangered ferret species in montana by using a drone that will shoot m&ms loaded with vaccines so they're trying to feed this thing <laughs> It's an endangered ferret. This is a true story. I didn't make that up. It sounds like it. So uh, Pokemon Go was all the rage this last week. Uh, They're saying if you find yourself walking a few miles to hatch eggs for Pokemon Go, you might as well do a good deed while you're doing it. Uh, Muncie Animal Shelter, Muncie, Indiana, is hoping to get these game-crazy followers to grab a hold of a dog on a leash and take the dog for a walk while they're doing it. That sounds like an interesting idea. It's a good idea. Take a dog for a walk while you're playing Pokemon Go. Or don't even play Pokemon Go. Just take a dog for a walk. Yeah. I've got a story here. This is a true story. Uh, this this Pokemon Go thing. This happened in O'Fallon, Missouri. Police responded to a report of an armed robbery about a week ago. Teens ranging from age 16 to 18 are suspected of being behind this, uh, it says here, 10 or 11 armed robberies. Yeah. They were... They were coaxing people in with Pokemon characters. And while they were looking at their phone, walking around, they were stealing stuff out of their cars and sometimes even taking money from them, like holding them up in the park right there while these people are... says, we believe the app was used uh, as a beacon to set up Pokemon to lure in more players. Um, Trying to see if I can... They were using a lure module, whatever that is. No other Pokemon Go-related crimes have been reported in that area, but there was at least this one. It says it's causing people to be distracted. They're going around catching Pikachus, and clearly it is a distraction because while they're doing this, they're being robbed and don't even know it. So anyway, I don't know. Be careful out there. We have a second scoop coming your way. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This has been quite an election so far, and we've got a long ways to go. Stay informed at politicalstorm.com. It's a cool site with political news and information on the campaigns, plus a place to chime in and have a say in what you think. If you're into politics, you need to check out politicalstorm.com. Get informed from several different sources all in one place. Listen to podcasts like mine and learn about current election topics, read fun editorials, and engage your brain. It's your country. It's your vote. It's your voice. Politicalstorm.com. That's politicalstorm.com. Now your second scoop. We get a bonus scoop on the weekends. I love this. Uh, <laughs> nobody reads the terms of service. You ever read that? Like, hey, if you want to do this, you got to no. read all this stuff. You always just click and then you move on. A recent study concludes that everybody knows that nobody reads the lengthy terms of services or privacy policies that are bombarding internet users. Nobody understands them if they do read them. They're too long. Right. They and don't even legalese. make sense. This study made the point all too clear. Most of us, there were 543 university students involved in the analysis. They didn't even bother to read the terms of service before signing up for a fake social networking site called NameDrop. The students believed it was real. Those who did gloss over important clauses, the terms of service required them to give up their firstborn. And if they don't <laughs> yet have one, uh, they have until 2050 to have a child to give up. And they still accepted the terms of service. Yeah. Because they didn't read it. They didn't read it. I understand that because you know what? I'm guilty as well. I skimmed through it, but I'm like, I don't know what any of this stuff means. So yeah, I'm going to accept it so I can play the stupid game or download the stupid app or whatever it is. Hey, burglars use a taxi. Two men carrying (sighs) stolen computers and a flat screen flagged down a Berlin taxi in Germany to get their loot home. The driver first helped the thieves load the boxes and stuff. Uh, in front of law offices at about 1 a.m. They drove him to the apartment. After getting his fare and a generous tip, the driver called the police, who later went right back to that address and said, hey, um, we've got a tip that you guys might have stole a bunch of stuff. (laughs) So 
<laughs> he got to keep the tip, though. That's kind of nice. A couple of things here that were sent to me. I, I've, I've mentioned these guys before. Wallet Hub, they've got my email address. Yes, they, keep they sending certainly do. Well, here we have 2016's Best and Worst Cities for Driving. And we're going to hit the top 10 best cities for driving first. Then we'll do the worst. Because I always like the good news first. Okay. Tampa, Florida is one of the best cities for driving. It's number 10. Some of these really surprise me. Uh, Las Vegas, Nevada is number 9. Laredo, Texas is 8. Reno, Nevada, number 7. Chandler, Arizona, number 6. For now, best drivers? Best drivers. You'd think that these would fall in worst drivers. Uh, now we're in the top 5. Mesa, Arizona. Again, this absolutely fascinates me. Gilbert, Arizona. Corpus Christi, Texas. The top two are Tucson, Arizona, and Scottsdale, Arizona. But don't you think that's because it's an older population and there's probably there's not as many inexperienced drivers? That's probably and, what it is. But that yeah. would also, and, and I hate to say this, but that's why I was thinking they'd be the worst drivers because I've been driving where people just cut across like five lanes of traffic. You're like, what are they doing? And you get up there and it's just a little old lady that's going, I'm, I'm changing lanes. Deal with it. <laughs> You're like, oh, she didn't even look. She just changed lanes. Uh, now the worst cities for driving, and we'll do 91 out of the top 100, is Boston, Massachusetts, then Seattle, then New York, then Oakland, California, Baltimore, Maryland, Philadelphia, Chicago, San Francisco. The two worst for driving are Detroit and the worst city for driving, I've been there, but I've never driven there, Washington, D.C. Yeah, I've got to say, none of those really surprise me. No. I just, it's amazing to me that the best cities happen to all be, pr- pretty much, all be places where people retire. So yeah. there, there must be something to that. And the same people also sent me 2016. Well, if you think about it, they're not texting yeah. and driving, yeah. which is causing a lot of accidents every place else. Yeah. So, I mean, that takes out a huge portion of accidents right there. Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, 2016's most and least expensive energy states. States where the energy is most expensive and least expensive. So do you want to start with the most expensive or the least expensive? Let's idea? start with least. Least expensive energy states. These are states, so not just cities. But uh, number 42 on the list. So this is of the top 51. Oh, because there's uh, 51. There's 50 states and the Washington, D.C. area. So that's why. Okay. It's not the top 100. Uh, anyway, okay. <laughs> Least expensive energy. Iowa is 42. A little cheaper is Montana at $265. So what is this? I don't know what the dollar amount... I don't know. Is this a monthly amount that they pay? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, Idaho is 44. Then California. Then New Mexico. A little cheaper in Arizona. A little cheaper in Oregon. A little cheaper in Colorado. Number 50 is District of Columbia. They've got hmm. cheaper energy there. And the cheapest state for energy, least expensive energy state, is Washington. Washington State, 218 really? whatever units we're using here. Huh. Now, the most expensive states, number 10, Mississippi, then Indiana, then New Hampshire, then Maine, and number 6 is North Dakota, which really surprises me because they have oil and everything was so cheap there. Uh, apparently not their energy. Georgia is number 5. Vermont is 4. Rhode Island, 3. Number two, Massachusetts, and the most energy expensive state. Now, let's keep in mind, Washington was the least energy expensive state at $218. And it says the dollar amount listed beside each state, I finally found it, is the average monthly energy bill. $218 is the average monthly energy bill in Washington. Connecticut is the most energy expensive state. Their average bill for the same amount of usage is $404. Holy cow. That's double. Well, almost double. That is crazy. All right, there you go. A couple of interesting things to to learn on a bonus scoop. We've got some fun facts coming your way on the weekend edition of the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Do you buy lottery tickets? Maybe you wait till the jackpot is big, then you buy one. I was like that too. Like my odds got better because the jackpot was more. Well, I think I found something that actually will give me a better chance to win. It's called Lotto-licious. I learned about this from Richard Lustig. He literally wrote the book on how to win the lottery, and he should know. He's a seven-time lottery game grand prize winner. Richard plays and endorses Lotto-licious, and I just signed up too. I'd love it if you join Richard and I. You can play Powerball and Mega Millions without even going to the store. Sign up right now at RadioLottoPool.com. John and Heidi. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The youngest person to have a chart-topping solo single was Michael Jackson in 1970. 
Yeah, I, I yeah. would have been. That's that would have been my guess. Actually, so. uh, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? James Earl Jones voiced Darth Vader, but how many people do you think it took to get that character completely? How many different actors were involved in the character? He I'm, was just the voice. I have no clue. There were four. One guy for the body, another for the face, another person for the voice, and another for the breathing. So there are four different people All right. to make that character. So James Earl Jones is just one of four. Fun fact for you, Heidi. The largest gold nugget ever weighed 172 pounds and 13 ounces. Mm. Wow. Holy cow. Yeah, that's a lot. Uh, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Lake Michigan is located entirely within the United States. All of the other Great Lakes border Canada. Hmm. So Lake Michigan is all within the United States. And our final fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? General Motors introduced airbags as an option in 1973. How much more do you think it cost to get an airbag back in 73? Uh, 50 bucks. No, $225. Ah. There you go. A couple of fun facts for you this weekend. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Whether you're an experienced shooter or someone new to self-defense, Front Sight Firearms Training Institute has a course for you. You may recognize Front Sight from their reality TV show filmed at this private range 45 minutes west of Las Vegas. A Diamond Lifetime membership is $15,000, but we have a special price of just $3,000 available now only at radiosavings.com. This lifetime membership allows you to take over 50 courses as often as you'd like at Front Sight Firearms Training Institute. Get this deal right now at radiosavings.com. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi show this weekend. I love what I do for a living. Now, I don't know if you guys like it. Maybe you're like, (laughs) move on, dude. Uh, But I love what I do. I have a lot of fun doing what I do. But for those of you who don't like your job, I have some maybe ideal jobs for some people. These are real jobs. Um, Maybe some people are in the wrong career and they should try one of these. Lotion tester. You get paid to lay on a beach somewhere and test lotions. To make sure that I the could suntan do that. lotion... I, I would be willing to do that job. Yeah. So would you ever take a day off? If you did, would you go to the no. beach? No. <laughs> Why would you need to take a day off? An ice cream taster. Yeah. The only requirements are discriminating taste buds and a willingness to sample hundreds of gallons of ice cream a year. Can you imagine the brain freezes you That probably that? wouldn't be a job I'd be I'd, interested in. I'd like in. that. A toy enjoyment controller. You spend your entire day playing with toys to find out which ones would be a hit for kids. That would just be an interesting job. That would be fun. That's like what what Tom Hanks did on on Big. Big. Video game expert. Believe it or not, there are people who get paid to play video games, and they share their knowledge with people who call for help. And it says you could be a 12-year-old or you could be 42. Either way, if you're the expert at that particular game, people will line up to get the advice from you, and, Mm. and that is a career. So. Believe it or not, people make some make a very good how living. How sad is it that people are that addicted to games that they call for help in yeah, order hey, to be how able do I to get win past this? Wouldn't you do that? You could be an expert for Candy Crush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which level are you on? Nine thousand four hundred and eight. Yeah, well, that <laughs> that's an easy one. What level are you on on Candy Crush? I'm up in the two thousands yeah, somewhere. Yeah, this is crazy. World travel writer. Believe it or not, there are people who travel the countries and the world, and they write about it. Somebody has a job as a Ferrari test driver. Their typical Ooh. day involves cruising the scenic Italian countryside at top speeds and the world's most exotic sports cars. Oh, see, I wouldn't want to go fast. Oh, they, well, they probably have to go the speed limit, but they're out driving to make sure that things maneuver correctly. Yachting partners. There are people who go on all-expense-paid cruises on five-star ocean liners. Their only responsibility is to socialize with people who are single. If you happen to be single... You might not stay single for long because a lot of people end up getting married to people who were being paid to go and chat with them on the cruise. That's awesome. That's yeah. a job I'd do. <laughs> but you're married to me. And our final one is TV But you don't have viewer. a yacht. <laughs> no, no, I have a dinghy. Does that count? <laughs> TV sports viewers, you watch hours of taped sporting events to select the plays that will be included in bloopers and news programs. So there you go. A couple of interesting jobs that some people might love to have. I don't want to change my job. I like what I do right here on the John and Heidi Show. Hey, this is Tim from Hope and Faith Machine Works. Are you having one of these days? How in the world am I going to do that? Or even, if I could just have this... My life would be so much easier. Well, this kind of stuff is my specialty. At Hope and Faith Machine Works, we work with anyone who needs something built, fabricated, or just done right. We've done medical, industrial, PLC, and prototype designs. You can reach us at your hope. 
yourhopeourfaith.com. That's yourhopeourfaith.com. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. A man finds thousands of dollars worth of silver and gold coins and almost throws them away because he thinks that it's worthless junk. A builder unearthed a tankard stuffed with gold and silver coins, and he thought that it was old washers. Oh. Uh, Trevor Fishlay came across some 17th century treasure worth about 30,000 pounds. Whoa. He was working on a house in Abbotsham, Devon. Uh, the 64-year-old uh, handed them over to the customers who owned the, the land, which is the right thing to do. Yeah. Teresa and Bob Prouse, they say they are going to share the reward with him because that's he was nice. honest and gave it to him. But yeah. 30,000 pounds would be what? Is that like about $60,000? That's probably closer to fifty. Now. 50 well, with the recent things that happened in Europe, uh, as we learned from Jordan Goodman the other day, I don't know. It's maybe even more than that. Yeah, now. could be. Because the... the British pound is suffering right now, it sounds like. Not so. for long. It's going to bounce back, and it's well, going to bounce it's, back It's already bounced vengeance. back a little bit, so we'll see what happens there. Anyway, uh, moral of the story is the guy did the right thing, and he's going to be paid handsomely for it, so that's really cool. Coming up, we're going to talk about Alka-Seltzer. Uh, interesting stuff you can do with that stuff. It's all on the way. John and Heidi. I don't think I have ever ever had Alka-Seltzer. Have you ever had it? I've seen no, it on I've seen, I, commercials and stuff. I think it looks gross. Well, I've never had it. And if, if you are a person who has this stuff and you use it all the time, that's awesome. But did you know you could use it for other things too? In addition to whatever, in addition rather, to whatever we use it for typically, because it's, it's a medicine, isn't like it? Like upset stomach or oh, something, well, I think is what You can also for. use it to clean the toilet. <laughs> Drop in a couple Alka-Seltzer tablets, wait 20 minutes and brush and flush. The citric acid and effervescent action cleans the the china That's because your toilet is made out of porcelain china, and it cleans it really well, according to this story. Huh. You can also remove stains from the bottom of glass glass vases or a cruette. So if you have like a vase that's got a bunch of gunk in it right. and you can't get it out, they say throw some Alka-Seltzer tablets in there and watch it do its thing. Huh. Uh, polish jewelry. Alka-Seltzer tablets can help polish jewelry if you immerse the jewelry in Alka-Seltzer for a couple of minutes. Clean a thermos bottle. So if you got a bottle maybe that has a little stank in it and you're trying to get that stank sure. out of there, fill it with water, drop in four Alka-Seltzer tablets, let it soak for an hour or more, and then clean it right out. And if you've got a drain that's clogged, you can clear the sink drain by dropping in three Alka-Seltzer tablets down the drain and then a cup of Heinz white vinegar Wait a few minutes and then run hot water and bam, you got a clean drain. If it can eat through all that stuff, do you really want it in your stomach? I don't know. It's uh, that seems. <laughs> yeah, I think with the, with the with vinegar thing, I think it's the chemical reaction of those two things that are huh. helping. I don't know. All I know is it's interesting stuff, and I'll never look at Alka Seltzer's the same now after knowing that. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. This has been quite an election so far, and we've got a long ways to go. Stay informed at politicalstorm.com. It's a cool site with political news and information on the campaigns, plus a place to chime in and have a say in what you think. If you're into politics, you need to check out politicalstorm.com. Get informed from several different sources all in one place. Listen to podcasts like mine and learn about current election topics, read fun editorials, and engage your brain. It's your country. It's your vote. It's your voice. Politicalstorm.com. That's politicalstorm.com. John and Heidi. You ever heard the phrase, you are what you eat? Yes. I've heard this before, but what they should be saying is you are what your mama eats. According to a new study, women may be able to influence the sex of their child that is conceived by what she eats. Oh my gosh. The study found that women who ate big breakfasts, particularly cereals, were more likely to have a son, while diet low in calorie of minerals and nutrients were more likely to have a daughter. The percentage of babies that are girls has risen over the last four decades. This study would seem to explain it since a number of working moms have also risen uh, and the number of moms-to-be are too busy now for breakfast. They say this could offer a natural way for couples to select the gender of their child. So if you want a boy, have breakfast. If you don't want to have a boy, skip breakfast. Mm. Uh, that's what they're saying, according to that story. Yeah, I think that's a Did Did you have a lot of breakfast when you had Troy? Uh, did no. you skip breakfast when you had I've Taylor? never been a breakfast eater, and All I've right. had one of each child, well, so this is ridiculous. I think you had breakfast that one day, and that's what happened. Yeah, I'm sure. So. <laughs> All right, we've got some good news on the way. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. 
This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always try to wrap things up around here with some good news. I think this is pretty good news. Thrill Seekers Rejoice. This last Saturday marked the opening of a thing called the Sky Slide. I think it was two weeks ago because I think I've been holding this story for a while. The Sky Slide is a glass slide suspended 1,000 feet above downtown L.A. Ooh. The slide begins on the 70th floor, 7-0, not 17th, right. the 70, 70, 70th floor of the U.S. Bank Tower, tallest building in the United States west of the Mississippi. It extends 45 feet down to the 69th floor. The adrenaline-inducing ride lasts only a few seconds, but it promises a thrill as passengers glide down on a mat with nothing but an inch and a quarter thick glass separating them from the city below, a thousand feet down. I might do that. It'd be kind of interesting. That would be fun. So you slide, you go out, whoop, and you boop, pop back into the building. Yeah, that so, might be fun. Depending on how much they want to charge you to do it, I'd be like, you know, because I'm when, pretty cheap. We, <laughs> we were out in Vegas a couple of years ago, and they had a what is it, a zip line uh, down at the yeah. what's that street that went down? Fre- uh, Fremont Street. Yeah, and and I wanted to do that, but it was kind of expensive. Back it was, then. It was and, brand we were like, new, and we were like, nah. eh. <laughs> it'd be we fun, but the giant it's not going to be that fun. We did the big wheel thing, though. That was pretty cool. Yeah, we did do that, and that and was your expensive. brother. Your brother was telling us that we got. Oh, you guys got to go. And I guess if you go at the right time, they have like they have a, a bar and stuff. We didn't do that. We, we didn't were the have only booze. ones in the car yeah. when we did ours. So it would have been more fun if we would have done the booze. Yeah, but. it would have been more fun if there had been people to talk to as well, because it's just the two of us in there. We're like, so. uh so this is been, Vegas. Been kind of hanging out together for the whole <laughs> week, and we work together too, so we're always together. But at least uh, we're together, looking out this glass window. <laughs> <laughs> we got a photo, I think, on our Facebook page we of do. us in that. So there you go. If you want to see the view from that, you can check out Facebook.com/slash John and Heidi Show. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. If you want to check out this awesome 1,000 feet above Los Angeles slide. That's uh, up there. I've got a link to that as well on our Facebook page. Again, that's Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show.